The Big Bang Theory isn't great TV, but maybe it isn't quite quite as wretched and loathsome as the internet would have you believe. Before all of you unsubscribe at once, let me explain myself. I was starting to plan out a pretty fun video idea I'd been sitting on for a while, which would touch in part on that most reviled of all televisual properties, the adventures of Shellman Kupo and friends, The Big Bang Theory. Bazinga. And I was searching up reviews, video essays, and so forth on this show to just get a vibe on how YouTube feels about it. And one thing I rewatched was this wisecrack video from a few years back, The Big Bang Theory, What Went Wrong. I say rewatched because I've been subscribed to Wisecrack for years, I really enjoy most of their content, and when I clicked on this the other day, I realized I'd seen it before, and even then, back before I had a YouTube channel of my own, I didn't think it was a great video, and I still don't. So I thought I'd make a quick video pushing back against the ideas in that Wisecrack piece, because while I am certainly not a fan of the Big Bang Theory, I do think the legacy it has as the worst, most incompetent thing ever is unhelpful and a little bit unfair. And with over 2 million people having seen that video, with it being one of the top search results on the internet's premier video hosting media criticism platform, it's not only a telling microcosm of the way the internet sees this show, it's also had, and is still having, a tremendous impact on spreading that perhaps hyperbolic vision. Their video should be linked up in the corner now, if not it's in the description, but if you don't want to go watch that whole thing first, Wisecrack's thesis is essentially as follows. The Big Bang Theory isn't just a bad comedy, in fact it barely functions as one, because of the show's referentiality. It isn't merely that the show relies on references, it's that it almost exclusively substitutes actual jokes for references. <laughs> now in case you missed the laugh track, Sheldon giving Penny the definition of friction was the joke. You see, it's funny because it's a reference. The ideas here are interchangeable. Supposedly, we're not laughing at what Sheldon says, we're laughing at the fact that he referenced science. The actual science isn't the joke, but the fact that they're talking about science is. Friction isn't funny. The reference to friction is funny. We're laughing at him because he's a funny nerd. The video is really arguing two things. One, that this empty referentiality is a reflection of the destruction of reality philosopher Jean Baudrillard laid out in Simulacra and Simulation. And two, that any laughs here ultimately result from these characters being dunked on. It all kind of comes together, and the philosophy stuff is undoubtedly intriguing to think about. Longtime viewers here will be aware that I too am a certified Baudrillard enjoyer, but the heavy lift here to turn the Big Bang Theory from just bad, just mean-spirited into like a really bad show, a metaphysical void of meaning, something deserving of this reputation as the worst of the worst, that's undoubtedly performed by the idea of references as humor. The Big Bang Theory is proof that meaning is dead. But the case Wisecrack's video makes for this isn't a strong one. To be sure, we are shown a couple of examples where a joke uses jargon to set up an unrelated punchline. Leonard, do you recall when I said that I was going to revolutionize humanity's understanding of the Higgs boson particle, and you said, Sheldon, it's 2 a.m., get out of my bedroom? In that case, yes, you could swap that out. The science isn't the joke, but this just isn't the case in some other examples the video tries to give. One example they hit hard is the DMV scene. You know what, I'm just gonna play you that clip in full, together with what they say about it. There's no real other way to do this. It might mean I run into copyright issues, but I'll do my best to appeal them. Anyway, here. More often than not, jokes rely on characters cramming in whatever scientific explanation is relevant to the action. When are roadways most slippery? Now, okay, there are three answers, none of which are correct. The correct answer is when covered by a film of liquid sufficient to reduce the coefficient of static friction between the tire and the road to essentially zero, but not so deep as to introduce a new source of friction. <laughs> They're references for the sake of references. So I want to make two maybe bold claims here. One, that is a joke. It isn't a reference. It isn't laugh because nerds said science words. It is a joke. And I'm going to demonstrate that using Wisecrack's own criteria. Their more recent video on conservative comedy, also linked below, uses Todd McGowan's following definition. Comedy occurs when we are surprised by a conjunction of lack and excess. An excessive response to lack, or the emergence of lack occasioned by excess, reveals how every lack is excessive and every excess is lacking. When the coincidence of lack and excess surprises us, this is the comic event. 
If you want to get a better picture of what that looks like in other works, hey, go watch that video. It's a characteristically good piece from Wisecrack. But let's bring that idea back to the Big Bang Theory, Smellman Kubrick, and the DMV. What are we seeing here? Well, a conjunction of lack and excess. On a basic level, Sheldon is asked for a right answer by a questionnaire, a test, which, due to poor wording, doesn't offer the right answer. Sheldon decries a lack of specificity in this situation, but watching it, we find excess in that complaint. There's no need for this level of specificity in this scenario. But this only works if Sheldon is right about something, if we understand he's right. So the science isn't a reference here. Wisecrack plays the DMV clip as an example of this pattern. Friction isn't funny. The reference to friction is funny. But it isn't. You couldn't swap that out for another science phrase, some more jargon. It wouldn't work. Sheldon's explaining, in let's be honest, a high school physics level retort, why a common question, a question most drivers will have answered at one point or another, doesn't actually work, at least when phrased like this. So we're not laughing because funny nerd said science words, we're laughing half because Sheldon's misunderstood the function of this test, and half because in doing so, he is right and they are wrong. It is, in some small way, a victory. There, too, we see a conjunction of lack and excess. Think about the space this is happening in. This is the DMV. I'm not American, obviously, so I've never had the pleasure to step inside a DMV myself, but I've watched TV. I know how you guys feel about it. The DMV appears across American culture as a dreaded, almost Kafkaesque space of bureaucratic tedium beyond comprehension. Did you fill out the 1170? I filled this out. That's the 1190. You're gonna have to go stand in the blue line. Look, I was already in that line. Sir, don't get snippy with me. I've been here all morning. The DMV is bureaucratic excess. It's the ultimate symbol of too much red tape, of being tied up with form after form, line after line, of simple goals being drowned in mounds of paperwork. The whole idea here is, no, you can't just sign up for your license or do this or do that. Again, I don't really know what the DMV is, I've just seen jokes about it on TV. No, it's complex, you have to follow their rules, abide by their bureaucracy, even if you don't understand why. Because they do, they're in charge, and they know best. What Sheldon does here, though, is reveal that this excess is lacking. They don't know best. Technically, their test doesn't have the right answers on it. At the end of the day, the DMV isn't the arbiter of truth. You don't have to give the right answer. You have to give their answer. It's a jab at the hypocrisy of all these maybe mismanaged systems and offices, which make you jump through hoops all day long, reject the letters or forms you submit if there's a single error, all while their own paperwork is flawed. And sure, with a bit of common sense you can muddle through, you can tell that the DMV form isn't actually asking for the theoretical situation when a road would be the absolute slippiest possible, but there is a flaw here. There is a basic lack of logic in this excessive network of rules. In this moment, Sheldon becomes all of us tearing our hair out at an incomprehensible government website. He becomes Amy Santiago pointing out the impossibilities of the New York permit office. He becomes Jerry Seinfeld raging against the car rental machine. Unfortunately, we ran out of cars. But the reservation keeps the car here. That's why you have the reservations. I know why we have reservations. I don't think you do. And that brings us to my second claim. This isn't just a joke. It's a good joke. It is well known that nothing kills a joke more than explaining it, let alone doing so with theory, so I'm not expecting any of you to be in stitches right now, but as we've seen, there is a fair bit going on here. This isn't a lazily written joke. I like this moment. I think this is a funny moment. It's a breathe slightly more heavily out of your nose moment. Bazinga. And that's subjective, obviously, but what I think is less arguable is that per a definition Wisecrack endorses in a more recent video, there is some amount of real humour here. This doesn't need to be a long video. Some of the other criticisms Wisecrack makes, particularly in this section on the Big Bang Theory's referentiality, don't really sit right with me, like the way they try to fit the empty referentiality label onto that mystic Warlords of Kaar scene. I think there is a general reference being made here to the juxtaposition between the kind of silly naming conventions and creature rosters you see in trading card games, and the intensity, the seriousness in which they're treated or employed by players, but I don't think there's much to be gained by going through the video with a 
fine toothed comb because I think we can see from the way they try to deploy that DMV example that Wisecrack's thesis doesn't really work here. Or at least, it isn't exactly supported by the moments they cite. Now, if they'd have gone through enough episodes, they could have found sufficient examples of the empty referentiality they're discussing, but I think the fact that within the number of episodes they watched, there weren't enough instances of actually really empty referentiality to fill out their video might tell us that it isn't as dominant a trend in the Big Bang Theory as the video suggests. It does sort of feel like they went into the planning of that video with the intention of writing about Baudrillard and the destruction of reality, then watched the episodes, realized the shoe didn't quite fit, and jammed it on anyway, knowing nobody was going to leap to the show's defense. I think it's either that or they went harder on that moment, on a few other moments too, because it's the Big Bang Theory, because of that almost inescapable perception of the show as unfettered failure, as an utter televisual abomination. Of course, this perception is not unfounded, but it erodes nuance and tarnishes otherwise solid critical efforts. In taking the show's utter failure as a given, in making a video in which the very presence of any functional humour whatsoever is all but denied, in which the details of jokes are ignored and dismissed as empty references simply because they include a bit of scientific terminology, Wisecrack shows us this. And look, the Big Bang Theory doesn't deserve much, but it deserves more than that. This show is often a poor one, especially as the seasons drag on. Frequently, it's downright mean-spirited. Any moment in which it celebrates nerd culture or fandom is inevitably sandwiched between three or four moments mocking these characters and their identities, again increasingly so as the years went by. A lot of the points where the show brushes up against social issues have aged incredibly poorly. I've linked a great video by Che and Lin in the description which gets into the bad way the show's women are written, but it isn't an utter technical failure. The jokes are jokes, mostly, and some of them are even funny. I'll have a Diet Coke. <laughs> okay, can you please order a cocktail? I need to practice mixing drinks. Fine. I'll have a Virgin Cuba Libre. That's, um, rum and coke without the rum. Yes. So, coke. Yes. And would you make it diet? <laughs> Is that a low bar? Absolutely. The Big Bang Theory isn't great TV. But maybe it isn't quite, quite as wretched and loathsome as the internet would have you believe. Cheers for watching. Drop a like if you're feeling generous, and big thanks as always to my Patreon supporters you're seeing now, especially Daniel Goldhorn, Heather Long, Ryan Emily, and Weirdy Beardy.